Hi, my name is Charles, and welcome back to part 7 of the OpenSCAD video series. In this part, we're going to talk about the echo operator, the modulo operator, but not in the sense of mathematics, variables, and mathematical operators. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the echo operator. So essentially, that takes uh, something you may have written uh, in your code and outputs it um, to the uh, the terminal, the console, the console, that's what it's called. Um, so it's just echo uh, and you need a semicolon and say you have a, a string which is just uh, something inside uh, quotation marks, say hello my name is and you press F5. And as you can see, it's printed out to the console it says echo. Hello, my name is and you can do this with other things you can do this with numbers. Uh, let's say five, five, maybe you have a formula. So you put 10 minus three it should be 12. And yeah, so it will Basically, whatever you put in there, it'll evaluate and then it will print it out to the console. So that's the echo command. Pretty simple, pretty basic, but I think it's going to be useful in a minute. Um, so the next thing we're going to learn is the modulo operator. And modulo has a different meaning whether you use it in a mathematical context or in open S, the OpenSCAD code context. So we're going to look at it in the code context. So say we have a cube with dimensions uh, 20 by 3 by 10. Say we have, well, it's not quite a cube, it's a rectangular prism. Um, say we have another cube intersecting with it. Okay, you can see that they're uh, mashed together, they're in there, um, maybe, but maybe we want to see through one and kind of see what's going on on the inside. So that's where the modulo operator comes in. So the first one that we made, we just put the modulo operator in front and F5. And this allows us to see through it uh, and what's going on. So we can do that to the other one too. We can see it depends which shape you're using, whether you get the best view or not. And we can now view both. Um, yeah, that's more or less it. Uh, I think you can also use the hashtag and that will make it pink. Um, so you can do similar things, hashtag or the modulo percent sign, whatever you want to call it, that'll allow you to see through things. And that can be really helpful. So we'll comment this out. Next, we're going to move on to variables. And so, um, say you need something that's dependent on something else. So one of the major things about OpenASCAD is that it's a parametric modeling language, which means that by just changing a few numbers or a few values, you can drastically affect an object that you're working on. So for example, say you have a propeller that has three blades, and then you want it to change it to five or seven or two blades, then you just change one number, and that will change the entire object for you. It makes it really easy. So variables are the base of that. Um, so we'll say it's a really easy to declare variables. You just say uh, the var, for example, my variable 
is equal to, let's say 10. And that doesn't, doesn't seem to do much, but now the code recognizes var, var as a variable that's equal to 10. Something to note in OpenASCAD, if you have some programming experience, is that you can't change valuable variables or they take the last, I think it's the last value that's assigned to them. So they only, for the entire evaluation of the code, if you have a variable declared like this, uh, and it's not inside a for loop, which we'll get to later, don't worry about that, um, then it only takes on one value for the entire code. So let's use the echo operator again, just to see uh, there. And we can see that it's 10. So we didn't say 10, but now if we change this to 15, it changes to 15. So we essentially have, um, we're getting the vari value of a variable. Let's say our next variable is equal to 20. And it's important that a semicolon is here or else you'll get a syntax error. So you need that variable. The, the semicolon. So um, we have var and next, these are two of our variables. So we can do things, we can add them. And we get 35, because 15 plus 20 is 35. We can subtract them and we get negative five, uh, multiply and divide. And these are some of the basic mathematical operators, uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. There are also, also methods to do uh, powers uh, and trigonometric functions. Um, this is all available in the documentation. So if you're not sure if uh, OpenSCAS has a function that you're looking for, it's probably best to look at it, look for it in the documentation. It has most standard mathematical functions that programming languages have. Um, and I mean, sometimes depending on what you need, you might be able to define it yourself through functions, but that that's something we're going to come back to a little bit later. So, um, say we have two cubes and we want to move them. we can use our variables to define predefined movement. So let's say var and negative var. So that will create two cubes of size five and they will move in opposite directions from each other depending on how you change this number variable. So if you change that to five, we change that to 10, change it to 20. So we just have to change one number and we get behavior in two objects. So um, maybe next, maybe we want uh, some other movement to take place. So now we have two variables controlling them. Um, we can also make next dependent on var. So we can say next is equal to var plus three. And so now we just change uh, var and we get uh, loads of different behavior uh, on our two objects. So um, this is how you use variables uh, in translate and rotate statements. Um, something maybe I should have mentioned before, but that's useful now. Um, if you have more objects, you can do actions on all of them by adding curly braces. So for example, if I add curly braces at the start and the end of where I want to change my object or my objects, I can, uh, 
just add the rotate command and I can put there somewhere in here. Uh, so let's say there times three. So it'll be three times 10, so it'll rotate 30 degrees. So by just changing this variable now, we have control over a bunch of different things. Rotation, translation, move somewhere out there. We can even use it to control the size. Uh, so variables are very useful. Use it to change a bunch of things. And that controls the size, the rotation, now it controls a bunch of different things. So that's mostly it for the mathematical operators and um, and variables that's that's more or less it um except i forgot one thing so you can define variables to be other things not just numbers so you can say um uh, you can define variables to be strings so this is a string Um, and you can define them to be things called Boolean values, which is either true or false. So is equal to, let's say false. And we will change var back to zero. That doesn't help because now that's made the size of our cubes zero. So let's change them. We'll change them back to five. Um, and so now they appear and we can see, we'll see what happens when um, we assign their centers to be this Boolean value. So you can say it's equal to bool. And so they've changed. And what has happened is um, their centers have gone from being true to being false. So that changes the cube in ways that we've seen before. It puts an edge on the origin to begin with. I mean, a vertex on the origin to begin with as opposed to its center. So that changes. We can also, we can just change it back. We can change the centers of both of them just with one value in one place. So that makes it really convenient and easy. Um, and then we can echo strings. So we have echo, uh, we have this echo statement, and we can have another echo statement, um, other. And so it prints out zero first, var divided by next, zero, and then echo this is a string, which is the value of other. So that is more or less it. That's mostly it for variables uh, in OpenSCAD. So thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.